Welcome back to another Toyota video. Today I'm working on my 3.4 1990 Toyota Pickup X Cab. It's been about 1300 miles since I've done this swap. I know that because I just did my oil change yesterday and I looked at my odometer. It's been 13, 1303 miles. Of course, I put some miles in already today. This is my daily rig. At first, when I built this rig, I thought that I was going to make it a SAS rig, build another hunting off-road rig. But after some financial decision, I figured, man, let's just keep this as a daily. Now, I want to give you guys an update real quick that's not related to the topic of this video. I uh, went ahead and sold all my other Toyotas already. My Tundra and all my other Toyota. As of now, I only have two Yoda. This one and the Land Cruiser 80. So today's video, when I did my 3-4 swap, I was somewhat on a small budget, a friendly budget. So I didn't go, I didn't went ahead and spend the money on the cold air intake now on my my swap from last year my 94 the red one i went ahead and went all out i spent the money and did a toy only swap cold air intake i love that intake super simple super good i definitely rec i recommend that intake if you plan to just keep your rig daily now if you plan to make your rig an off-road rig and you need a snorkel or you're gonna do any water crossing you might you can still use their cold air intake, but you might have to modify that to build a snorkel. So this rig is going to be a dedicated um, garage queen. It's going to be a dedicated mall crawler city only. And I don't plan to do any off-roading or any deep water crossing. So even though I have the air box, the stock one, it's all nice and built already for it. I did the ISSMR. Uh, the budget came in and I was like, man, let me go ahead and treat myself treat this engine to something really nice so today i got the toy only swap cold air intake um this is the filter that comes with it it's the aem filter part number 212036dk as in donkey kong it's a really nice filter it's just like any um regular wash filter this almost looks like a K&N l filter but it's aem has the AM right there. It's washable. Um, you don't need to lube it. You don't need to grease or anything like that. Um, you can just slap it on and you're good to go. So that's the nice thing about it. So it comes with the filter and I'll show you the magic piece. So this is the cold air intake. Let me go ahead, unwrap this real quick and I'll show you guys what all comes with it. And then we'll go ahead and get this install, take out the stock box and slap on this baby. I love this product. It is a spendy product. I think right now on the website they they had it for 230 but then i think the price went up to 250 so it is pretty expensive but i think it's definitely worth it if you're looking for a co air intake don't buy any cheap one and try to fabricate it yourself these are specifically made for the 3-4 especially when you do a 3-4 swap so it's definitely worth the money everything is plug and play whoever wrapped this must have had a really good time wrapping it man they put a lot of shrink wrap on it Definitely overkill, but definitely worth it. You know, you don't want this thing to get damaged during shipment. It comes with all the hoses, plumbing hoses, we like to call it. Really nice. It's aluminum, it's metal. The tube itself here, it's not plastic, it's metal. These rubber hoses are really high quality. I think they're silicone. They're really nice. Come with some nice heavy duty clamps. They're not your typical hose clamp that you see. So these are really nice. They're not cut in the middle like the regular hose clamp where it's gonna damage it. Super nice. The nice thing about this is that, see this bracket here? This bracket bolts onto the side of your passenger head and this is what supports it. This is what supports it. So it's just not hanging in there by its dead weight. So this is it right here. I'll show you guys where all the hose goes. So it has two hose, one hose right here, one hose right here, and very similar, uh, very simple to install. I'll show you where they go and what they, what what function they provide. Also has another one right here. This is closer to the throttle body. So if you're looking at this way, throttle body's over here, air filter, go, your MAF, and then your air filter is this way. So that's how it looks like. So one of the first thing we need to do, and again, I'm assuming you guys already done your 3-4 swap, so you guys know how to remove your air box already. But obviously there's a hose right here at the side. This one here goes to your EVAT box. It's right there near your power steering. Unplug your MAF sensor. Uh, nice and slow, don't want to break it now. <clears throat> Unplug that. Now again, mine has the ISR mod where these plastic thingies, there's one here, one down here, and one over here, it's been deleted already. So all that's nice and nice and good to go. So you have this hose, and then you have one hose right here. Pull that off. This one's gonna get replaced, guys. The one that's way on top right here by the TPS, that's gonna get replaced with a new one. Go ahead and 
unlock it 10 mil I'm still gonna keep this set up here. It's keep it for backup. Maybe one day I do another three, four swap and I'm on a budget. I can just slap this on, ready to go. So unplug that. Um, this box here, I went ahead and did a, uh, a insert nut. So I have it tightened down here. So I'm gonna remove this, um, remove that nut real quick because this box is held down towards the old battery tray. But for the most part, remove your old system. So just need to do that. This filter here has 1300 miles, definitely a little bit dusty, but still good to go. So I got one little 10 mil with the insert nut that I put down this box and it wasn't the best system. It's still kind of wobbly, but it was good enough. So that's it. And now everything should come out really nice. Let me go ahead and... Let me throw this air box back in. Like I said, this, this system here is still good. It's, nothing's wrong with this system. It's just not pretty, you know? Once you do these three, four swap, you want a pretty engine bay. So go ahead and just remove the whole entire unit. And then we'll go ahead and unbolt this hose right here. You guys can see, we, we still need the MAF. So obviously we need that. So go ahead and unbolt that. And then there's two 10 mils that hold the MAF sensor to the air box housing go ahead and remove that as well once you have it broken down this is what you have left you can put this hose back in because like i said we won't be using that <laughs> throttle body section isr mod deleted you have the maf in between this is a good time to go ahead and clean your maf if you need to i don't need to because i recently already went ahead and clean it but if it's dusty greasy or anything like that you want to definitely clean it while you're there so this will be using i went ahead and put those two screws back on those two screws what hold, held it in place at the box and again you have the box that you don't need no more there is that hose that goes right there on the side that i showed uh, removed earlier so this is pretty much it for the three four box and this is what you should have right now and again my setup is a little bit different yours could be similar this green box is where i keep my ecu this won't be interfering with our setup because i know it works before and then that bracket that i was telling you about that hold the or that supports the cold air, air intake from toy only swap it goes right onto the head so there's a little there's a section right here it's a 14 mil and it goes right there so that's all we have now the throttle body looks clean we'll go ahead and slap on the new one do a little quick wipe down throttle body is nice and clean not sure if you guys can see but i haven't installed the uh i haven't installed the air filter or anything yet i'm just gonna go ahead and pre-mount it um keep in mind of the orientation that you want your hose to be in either this way or over here it came like this and i don't like this way so i'm gonna put it this way facing towards the firewall so make sure this one is tight this is the one that goes to the tube they're 10 mil and I love these clamps here. They're really nice and sturdy one. They have Loctite or they're, um, they have the uh, lock nuts on it. So that one's tight. Oh, I had a little old nut in here. But yeah, just keep in mind of how your orientation is. I want it this way, so I'm gonna put it this way here. So this side just slides onto the body, the intake throttle body. So you guys see how smooth that was? Now you could, tilt it up and down so i'm not gonna bolt down everything yet until i have everything all nice and tight and then we'll go ahead and tighten everything down but it goes in really nice like that and then you can see how the orientation is you can have it towards this way i think i'm gonna have mine like this let me just go ahead and tighten it just a little bit so it's not super loose yeah just like that and then you have this this big hose here this is the one that goes over here this is your replacement hose. The next thing we can do is we can mount the support bracket down here. You can see the support brackets down here. So it mounts really nice. So you can see how I had to tilt it. So it, right now it doesn't want to line up with the hole. And I just have to tilt it up a little bit. And it comes with the bolt already. So let me go ahead and get the bolt real quick. This is the new hardware that came with it. 14 mil. Super nice. Don't need to put a lock tie or anything like that. So let me go ahead and get this bolted down real quick. It just goes to the side of the head that I showed you guys over here. Hmm. 
nice and smooth in there. I love this setup, guys. It's such a clean setup. It looks good, it's amazing, and it's very practical, it makes sense. Tighten this one down real quick. There's also a little hose clamp right here. You guys can't really see by the bracket. You guys see that right there? This bracket right here. This is where you put one of your, your hose right here for the TPMS. You can slide it through that. It holds your wires. And I don't think I'm gonna need it. So I'm gonna go ahead and tighten this piece over here by the throttle body, just so it doesn't move anymore. Take your 10 mil and give it a few shoot. It smells so good too. It smells so like clean. Well, my engine still smells good. Yeah, so I'm just gonna go ahead and shoot this one in real quick. Make sure it's nice and even. Nice and clean, guys. Look at that. So sweet. <sighs> Double check everything. Making sure, I'm just making sure that the clamp is nice and even. I think I might have to adjust it just a little bit. There we go. Nice and even. And then let me go ahead and tighten that support bracket that I was down here by the head. This is going to a aluminum head, so you don't want to go super tight on this, guys. You don't want to strip it. A little bit's good. And then there's the other end the other end is a 12 mil i believe up here and that also um that also housed that um that bracket that you can put your wire through but i think i might not be needing it so let me go ahead and still tighten that up a bit i'll tighten up this last so now we just need to put the maf through here and then the air box the uh, air filter will go on the other end now keep in mind that the 3.0 the 3.4 motor um this is a 96 engine 1996 engine and this is the older style maf so the maf these right here bolt on really nice now the newer maf for the 3.4 <coughs> they're a little bit different they're like a little clamp or they're a little they're a housing that get bolt on into a cylinder a cylinder housing so i don't know how that will work because I never deal with that. So if you guys know how that worked with the newer MAF system for the 3.4, let us know in the comments. But I know for the old style, I like the old style because it just goes right in. It gets clamped down and then the air filter goes on the other side. So let me go ahead and unbolt this um, clamp right here. So the clamps are facing this way and it's hard to reach. So I'm going to go ahead and flip them the other way so they're on this side. Makes it easier to adjust and tighten and loose in the future. Yeah, definitely adjust these two hose before you slap on the tube. There's, there's so much grip on the clamps and the rubber silicone here that it's hard for the hose to turn around. I got the clamp out and I want it facing my way. This other one that bolts to the tube, I kept it the way it was. It does look cleaner with this piece facing down there, so I can see why they wanted to do that. But for functional purpose, um, it's going to be easier for me to keep it like this. So the MAF only goes in one way. Obviously, you guys know this would be the wrong way. It doesn't fit in there. You can see that. This piece goes in first. It's going to be tight in there. It's going to be snug. So definitely get it in there. And then, so this clamp down here that hold the wire, it usually would go over here. So you can see mine's kind of short. 
Mine's not short, but mine's short because I tied it. I zip tied it, so I might have to loosen mine up a little bit. Or I might have to turn mine down like this. <clears throat> and then it'll go in like that. Okay, perfect. I like that. I like that right here. So it's facing a little bit down, but that's good. And then we'll go ahead and put on the air filter. The air filter has its own clamp already. So if you're wondering where the clamp is, it's on the air filter. So we'll slap that on and then we'll tighten this piece and then we'll tighten this down here. And again, I'm not gonna use this piece here, but we'll save it for the future. And then I'll go ahead and show you guys where all these holes go to. Next, we have the A and the air filter. This is a super nice. And again, this is called the dry flow or the the filter system is a dry flow. You don't need to oil this on some K and N filter. You have to put the oil and stuff like that, which I'm not a fan of. So this is a dry filter. Once this gets dirty, you can just wash it, let it air dry and go from there. I'm actually gonna go ahead and order me another filter because these filter, you can order them separately on Amazon. I'll put links in the description. And what I like to do is um, even on my even on my Toyota, my 80 series, I have two filter. My 80 series use the Toyota filter, which are washable. And I have two of them. So whenever I'm washing one of them, I can just slap on the other one. And the next time when I want to slap on another one, I don't have to wait for this to dry and such. So I'm going to go ahead and order me another one just to have for spare to do that easy uh, air filter change. So this right here is the 8 mil. I'm going to go ahead and tighten up this hose a little bit just because it's super loose. I'm just going to snug it down just so that it doesn't move around so much. And again, be aware of the, the orientation of how you want it. I want it facing this way so it's easier to adjust. And this right here just slaps on right there. Now it's going to go right over this ridge here. This You see the rubber ridge? It's going to go over all that. So look at that. So look how much room there is, guys. So much room right here now. It doesn't hit the fuse box. There's, there's like about half inch right here it's not hitting the fuse box or anything but so much room right here so let me go ahead and bolt everything down and then we'll go ahead and hook up the hoses nice and snug Check, check, check. Man, it looks so clean now, guys. So this is plugged right now. This is plugged, this is good. It is, it's not hanging loose or anything like that. It's not gonna wobble around. So that looks good. And I just need to tighten this right here. This is the 10 mil. Let me tighten this right here. as close as possible to the edge but not too close so just like that perfect looks amazing go ahead and clean that thread right there because my drill bit is dirty so pretty it'd be nice if toy only swap in the future they laser grade this intake maybe put tos or put their logo on it just so people know that it's theirs and it is nice though but look how sweet this is so nice and pretty so clean now on this side um power steering can be accessed it you can um adjust your power steering belt now without having to remove your air box you can uh do your headlights and stuff like that lots of room over here now how amazing is that check that out Okay, so now let's get to the hoses. Everything's all nice and snug. Filter, this piece, this piece, this piece, this piece. Uh, the 14 mil down there. And then let me go ahead and tighten this real quick just to make sure it's nice and snug. And then let's go on to the air, um, the, all the air hoses. So as you guys can see on the 3-4 motor, there's three hoses that we need to hook up. It's very simple. I'll start with this first one here. This is the big one. <coughs> This one goes to the EVAT box. So you see, this is the original one that went to the stock air box. You can go ahead and remove this one because it's all ugly and dirty and old. And what this one goes to is you just run this one and it goes right here, <coughs> right there onto the EVAT box. I believe this hose here is a bit bigger in diameter. So I'll see how that goes. 
and then we'll go ahead and test this, this one up. This one here is a little bit longer, so they made it about an extra foot longer. So just go ahead and measure, um, pre-fit it loosely, and then cut off, cut off the um, extra. So that's that one, easy to do. This smaller one here goes to the fuel pressure regulator. This line here is the fuel pressure regulator on the stock air box. It originally goes into one of those little ISR um, plastic on the on the end on this piece here. So when we do this ISR ISR mod, we run this fuel regulator hose right back to this piece right here. This piece here is usually capped off like this right here. So what I'm going to do is you can either keep it this way and then just cap off this end or you can hook this one up like this and then you cap off this end. So I'll figure which way I want to do. To be honest, it'll be easier to cap off this section over here. So in the future when you remove your um, this intake box, when you remove your cold air intake, you don't have to worry about you know unplugging it here. You can just unplug this hose and then unplug the hose over there. Now the one over here, let me show you on the original setup, it went right here. So you can just run this back to the way it was and you can see here, this one is extra long. So that's one way of doing it. You can run it right to where it originally goes or you can follow this tube here and this tube here goes down here, down here, down to the um, it goes down to the top of the valve cover. Now, if you did this, you would go ahead and eliminate this tube. Now, you can't really eliminate this metal tube because it's fused in with these other ones. But if you wanted to, you can run this hose directly down here and then you'll delete this rubber hose as well. For me, I'm just gonna run it through right here. So I'll go ahead and make some measurement. Maybe I'll make it a little bit longer and then I'm just gonna hook it up right there. Super simple. They all come with the clamps already. So I might be using their hose clamps. If these are too small or too big, I'll go ahead and put my own hose clamp on it. I'm gonna start with this big one here. Go ahead and delete this. It's also good to just save this hose for future reference. Don't just go ahead and throw them away. It's not cracked or anything like that. It just looks dirty. So go ahead and do this one first, the big one to the evap box. So go ahead and save that for later. And then this one, you can route it like this. Let me move this hose clamp real quick before I make that permanent right there. These are some odd hose clamp that they give you. It's so spread apart. Let me see how I want to do this. Oh, I can slide it right away. So slide through it. So I'm just gonna make it nice and snug, not too loose. So that's nice there. I can tell these are some really nice quality hose clamp too, or hoses. So that looks super clean. And then it goes right here. I'll go ahead and maybe cut off like a foot of it. Yeah, so maybe a foot of it off. So about right there. So get your hose cutter, make a nice clean cut. And these extra piece right here, I always like to just keep them around. You never know when you need stuff like this. So I have a bin full of random hoses, different sizes, fuel lines, stuff like that. So I throw this into my little hose box. This over here just gets connected to the evap box. Super simple. If you guys can hook this, if you guys can install this, you guys can hook up the box. Uh, these hose pretty simple. Okay, so it fits in really nice. It's nice and snug over here. I just have to put the clamp on. Next hose I'm gonna do is the one in the far back. Just cause I wanna see if I have any plugs for this fuel, um, the fuel line. This is the fuel return. Um, it's not the fuel return, but it goes to the fuel pressure regulator. So this hose um, that comes out of the intake, it is a important, it needs to be a vacuum line. So let me go ahead and do this one back here. Let me just go ahead and I don't need to make this super short or super long, honestly, because I plan to keep it this setup. I don't want to do a full direct mount down there because down there is super hard to access it. So let me just go ahead and do it like that. 
I'm gonna make this as short as, as short as possible. Maybe I'll make it like a couple inches long so in the future I can replace it. So right there. So do it right there. And this one here, you have about almost two foot. You guys can see how long this extra length is. So I love the fact that TOS, they give you longer than you need so you can do some stuff to it. So that's spare now. Keep that for spare. I had a feeling this was gonna happen because this happened on the last time I did a swap. So this hose clamp is too small. The hose clamp that they give you is too small for this fitting over here. So if it's in really snug, like you don't even need to put a hose clamp on this section right here. It's so snug that it's not gonna go anywhere. So what I might do is I might remove it real quick, remove this hose clamp, and then just put it the way it is and don't put a um, don't put any hose clamp on this section because this section here um, on this end right here it's super snug yeah right now right now it's actually hard to take it out so I can just leave it the way it is or really try to get it out yeah it's so hard to get out now so I think what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna leave it in there unless I can get this line back out Cause this hose here it's not like your stock hose this is like silicone hose so when it goes on to something there's a lot of grip in it unless you went ahead and lube it up yeah so this is super tight now oh there it is so it comes out now so i'm gonna go ahead and remove this hose clamp because this is too small it won't work anyways and i'm just gonna go ahead and install it with no hose clamp yeah this one is too small Save that for later. I also have a whole bin with miscellaneous hose clamp. The original hose that went on here, it didn't have a hose clamp. It's so snug that it just goes in there. So it doesn't really need to be tightened down or anything like that. It's just a vacuum line. So this is all good to go. And the next one we have is a fuel, fuel return, fuel pressure regulator. I think, like I said earlier, I'm gonna go ahead and cap this piece off because I already have it set up where it runs back to itself. So I do have a vacuum cap for it. So I'm gonna go ahead and cap it off and just connect it the way it was from toy only swap. So this one here just gets capped off. I don't know what size it is because I have a variety of just random vacuum caps. So this one just gets capped off. And then we'll go ahead and remove the original one. Oh, hose clamp just went flying. This one here just removes like that. That's, that's all it is to it. And then your TOS one goes right there. And this TOS one is perfect size. You don't need to cut it. it goes nice and smooth, just like that. This hose clamp is too big. Yeah, so the hose clamp right here is too big but the hose itself is really nice and snug so i feel like you don't even need a hose clamp but let me go ahead and try to find a smaller hose clamp and see if i can put something in there just for the heck of it the one that fell down there was the original hose clamp so maybe that might work so this is just a regular hose clamp from toyota this one was over here and you can see right now it doesn't fit so that means we're good because we want it to be nice and tight once we open up this hose clamp. So I'm gonna go ahead and use this one here. Open that up. Give it about maybe an inch or so before you slide it in. Nice and tight now, you can see that? Yep, perfect. Look at that, sweet. If you wanted to, you can put a zip tie just to tie these two together, but then that would make it not look pretty. So that's it right there, we're all done. Here's the final view of what your TOS co-air intake should look like. Super, super clean to what it would look like before. <coughs> just so much more engine bay and room now. And again, we have <coughs> the hose from the EVAP, the small one for the fuel pressure regulator, <coughs> one in the far back that goes right here simple simple 
tighten one, two, three, four, five. Plug it in, 12 mil, and then a 14 mil goes down by the head. <coughs> Check this out. There's no movement. <coughs> no movement or anything like that it's not gonna go anywhere so that bracket down there really makes air filter has plenty of room it's not hitting the fuse box now keep in mind there are some pickups in forerunner if you guys are doing swaps <coughs> where this fuse box is turned this way so instead of vertical it's turned that way and I noticed in the past I think there was a little bit of interference but for the pickup with the fuse box that are vertical to the fender there's no issue way more room now to do stuff right here and also adjust your power steering belt and do any kind of maintenance down there so that's the toy only swap co air intake review install hope you guys enjoy if you guys want one you guys can check out their website this is a this is not a sponsored video or anything like that but i really enjoy what they produce out there for the three four swap market hope you guys enjoy see you guys next time